Hello and welcome. I'm Robin Smith with the Healthy Relationship Sisterhood and the Rocky Relationship Movement. And I'm here to speak about how to have difficult conversations without ending up in an argument. So put a yes in the comment if you want some of that for yourself. And stay tuned because I'm going to be sharing my top three tips for how to have a difficult conversation without arguing. And not only without arguing, but how to get closer through communication practices. So you're gonna get some top skills from me tonight to implement. And then I also have a freebie to offer you where you're gonna get the other seven top skills that I have available around this topic. How to stay out of arguments and how to get even closer through your communication. So grab a pen and let's get started. I wanna start with what is it to have a difficult conversation? What, what's going on that makes it difficult? So some of the things that might make it difficult are you know you're not going to agree with your partner. You know you're, you have a lot of feelings or both of you do. And maybe those feelings are anger or fear or sadness about this topic. Or maybe you know that you don't know how to solve something. And so you're coming in with this, this pain, this concern about what are we gonna do and how are we gonna fix it? So these are you know, some of the things that contribute to a difficult, what I'm calling a difficult conversation and especially with your beloved. So that's the kind of zone that I'm in right now when I'm speaking about this. So, so my first tip here is that when you're coming into a conversation with a lot of energy from an emotion, a bigger emotion or a difficult emotion, then that's actually going to make it harder to have the conversation that you want to have, whether you're trying to solve something or get hurt or get understood. Um, the big energy of the emotions, um, they get in the way. And I'm not saying don't have your emotions because we want to be able to be with our emotions and know ourselves through our emotions and know other people through theirs and vice versa, be known through our emotions. But when they're really big and there's a lot of energy in the system, it can be overwhelming. And what happens to your nervous system with a lot of energy and especially the energy of fear, which brings up cortisol and adrenaline in your system, but anger can as well. Those hormones, cortisone and adrenaline can make it difficult to think clearly and therefore to communicate clearly and to problem solve. So when you've got a lot of adrenaline and cortisol in your system, if you're really anxious about the conversation or you've got, you're in a hurry with it or you, you know, you're upset with somebody, um, it's going to make it harder to actually solve the issue that you're trying to solve. <clears throat> so what do you do? What you do, my top skill for this, is to work with your nervous system. So you want to have a bunch of tools online to be able to work with your nervous system to calm your system down. And so a lot of people call this grounding techniques um, and calming and centering techniques. So there's a lot of techniques you can do with your breath and there's a lot you can do with your body. For me, I tend to like the ones that have to do with your body because when you involve your body, you, can, uh, you might find that it just works more quickly. For some people trying to calm their breathing actually doesn't work because they're then they're thinking about their breath and then their breath is going the opposite way they want it to go. So you can put a yes, that happens to me in the comment if you know trying to control your breathing, especially when you're already anxious or upset is actually pretty difficult. So I'm going to give you one grounding technique that you can try. And I'm actually doing it right now. I've got my feet on the floor and I've just put my attention down into my feet. So I'm feeling my feet. And because I did that, you saw that I just took a big breath. So it's, it's like you're grounding your energy because you're going down to the ground with your attention. So they say energy follows attention. <clears throat> so you put your attention in your feet. You can also put your attention in your legs. These are our biggest and heaviest bones and muscles. So you've got your attention in your feet and your, in your legs. You might feel if you're sitting that your legs are on the chair your feet are on the floor. And again, I notice my energy just comes down to my legs and I take a deeper breath and I feel more calm. 
And even if you're standing, you can have your feet a little bit wider and you can put your hands on your legs or on your hips and just feel the big muscles and bones of your lower body. <clears throat> and as you do that, ah, you might find yourself getting more calm and grounded. <clears throat> So this is one great grounding technique for you. And that might be, I would recommend actually something like that to help you get more present before you have a difficult conversation. It's not that you shouldn't have your feelings because feelings are real and part of being human, but you wanna be able to communicate as well. So grounding and centering before the big conversation. <clears throat> Okay, so number two, tip number two is what I call practice kindness and respect. So especially towards your beloved, hopefully you already do respect them, or that would be a red flag if you don't feel like you can respect the person that you're calling your partner or your lover. So we wanna, we wanna be in relationships where we respect each other, and, and then you want to kind of remember that respect, especially if someone has crossed a boundary, upset you in some way, not listen to you or whatever happened. You want, you want to kind of back up and remember your big vision of like why you're with them, what you like about them and treat them with that sense of respect and also kindness. Like you would treat a teacher you revere or a, a great being. Remember that this person is also a great being and worthy of respect. If you are trying to solve something together and you do want to work things out, you want to come in with that so that, that you're opening yourself up to resolution and to connection, right? Because if you're, if you're starting with disrespect, you're probably just going to create more distance between you. So I'm suggesting that you're in this conversation because you want to solve something and you want to reconnect or figure something out together. So kindness and respect, I think, are really key in difficult conversations to support your communication. So it's like a foundational piece for healthy communication to occur. Okay, so let's look at number three. Number three is to avoid blame and criticism. So it's sort of the flip side of um, kindness and respect. When you're not kind and respectful, you are likely to blame and criticize. So let's look at what blame and criticism might sound like. Blaming is often the you statement and pointing to what someone did, their behavior or action. So you left the toilet seat up, you didn't pick up the kids, you showed up late, you forgot my birthday, whatever it was. Those are blaming statements. You're pointing the finger and talking about what someone did wrong. And then a critical statement is more about someone's character. You're mean, you're, you're uncaring, you're thoughtless, you know, you're inconsiderate, you're stupid. So those are critical statements pointing to the you statement usually what you don't like about someone's actual nature or character. <clears throat> and it's a judgmental statement too because it's all arguable when you're talking about how someone is, that's just your opinion. <clears throat> So blame and criticism, the problem with those is that, again, they're going to create more distance because what do you do when you get blamed or criticized? You probably put up a wall. You get defensive. You're trying to protect yourself. You're trying, you know, no one wants to be seen as a bad person or to have done something wrong. So it's our natural instinct to want to protect and defend ourselves. But when we get defensive, where, like I was saying, it's like you have a wall up, you're harder to reach, you're not as available emotionally, and you're creating distance. So that's the problem with blame and criticism. And it usually doesn't solve the issue either. It just makes somebody feel bad. So <clears throat> when you can avoid blame and criticism and move towards kindness and respect, you're more able, you're more likely to be able to sort out the issue to be heard and understood like everybody wants to be, to be able to hear and understand the other person and to come closer together from this conversation instead of further apart. So that's my vision for you and for any difficult conversation is that it, it can actually be a doorway to greater connection, believe it or not. Because if you show up with all these practices and the, the 
the, the other seven, seven more that I have for you, which I'll tell you about how to get those in a moment, then you're, then you're going to be um, coming from a place that allows you to be seen and heard and understood, and therefore more able to be connected with. And you'll be able to do that for the other person as well. So just because it's a difficult topic or there's difficult feelings coming up doesn't mean you can't actually create a deeper connection. So I believe you can, and that's been my experience. So if you would like to get my other seven tips and skills for how to have a difficult conversation, not only without arguing, but to get closer, then I've created a cool freebie for you. And it's called the Ultimate Communication checklist, top 10 skills to have difficult conversations without arguing. And it is a checklist. So there's check boxes. And the idea is for you to be able to look at what skills you already have in place and what skills you're missing that you want to be working on. So you can check it off and see where you're at. And then um, you'll know where your gaps are and what you need to focus on. And you'll have those skills that you might need to be focusing on to get yourself to the place you want to be in your relationship. <laughs> so how to get that, that um, ultimate communication checklist is to click the link below and it will be here, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, um, click that link to the ultimate com communication checklist. And honestly, it takes under two minutes to read. So easy peasy, just a two pager, big writing, um, and you can go through it quickly. And then you're gonna also have a suggestion for how to continue your learning. And I'll just tell you now, I've got a free communication training coming up so you can have more hand holding and take it all to the next level. But get the checklist and you'll learn about my top 10 skills for staying out of arguments as well as next level training that's totally free. So thank you so much for being here and for learning alongside of me. And please put any questions or comments you have in the comment section below. Feel free to reach out if you want more support and handholding to take your relationship to, to the next level. I'm available for that. And I'm so happy to be able to support you. Have a lovely day or evening whenever you're watching. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.